Now to get started here, what we're going to be doing is a kind of a data dump of concepts and terms and procedures that we will be using in the course of our Particle Playground series here, our Particle Playground tutorial. And while we're doing that, since I'll be kind of talking extensively here, we're going to look at a nice winter scene. So let me play that back. You can see it's a trail in the forest with a snowstorm going on. And what's happening there is that we are seeing a real world particle system in effect, all these snowflakes. And as we understand more about particle systems and about simulators in general, you'll see how this is significant. So first of all, what we're going to be talking about is the whole concept of keyframing and procedural animation. So most animation in After Effects is created by keyframing, in which you specify the settings for your animation at a particular point in time, then go to another point in time and make a change in those settings. The computer then interpolates between those points in time to create all the frames that represent the motion between those keyframes. The concept of keyframing began in the old days of cartoon cell animation when the cartoonists had to draw all the frames used in the animation by hand, of course. The key animator, usually the director of the animation, would normally draw only the key frames or the moments of significant action in the cartoon. The exact frame where Jerry snaps the mousetrap shut on Tom's tongue, for example, and Tom's, of course, subsequent reaction. This key frame established not only exactly what was going to happen at that point in time, but also helped set the overall look of the animation, which is why usually the key animator was the director of the program, the guy who was responsible for the way things looked. Since there were thousands of additional frames to draw before the animation could be completed, the key animator would then turn all those frames over to what was called the in-betweeners. The in-betweeners, or slaves, would then draw all the frames in between the keyframes and finish up the animation while the key animator sat on the beach drinking cocktails. This concept still applies in a computer-based keyframe environment, except that you are the key animator and the computer is the in-betweener, and you drink the cocktails while the computer cranks out the frames. There are, however, a few animation tools in After Effects that don't use this keyframe metaphor, and Particle Playground is one of them. You can and do set keyframes in Particle Playground to control its behavior, but you do most of your work in Particle Playground by setting general rules for your particles to follow rather than setting specific keyframes. This type of animation is called procedural animation because you establish procedures or rules or operations that control how the animation proceeds. Broadly speaking, any animation tool that creates changes automatically without keyframing or that uses randomness to generate effects can be called procedural. Then there are a bunch of other effects in After Effects that are procedural to some extent, including plugins like hair, foam, snow, Mr. Mercury, shatter, and a set of other particle simulators themselves. So looking at this snow animation here, at this snow film, you can see that each of these individual snowflakes is following a set of general rules established by nature in which each one is affected by gravity and it's affected by wind and it's affected by where it fell from in the sky and all that sort of thing. But each one essentially is, has a good deal of randomness applied to it so that there's an individual path that each one of these individual snowflakes follows. So in the next video, let's talk a little bit more about this concept and see how this applies to our work in Particle Playground.